few months ago, I built a storage server with 150 terabytes worth of NVMe drives, and it was great. But one of the coolest parts of that was the IC Dock expansion unit that made it all possible. Well, if one expansion unit is cool, what about six? Yep, in version two, I built a fully customizable storage server complete with 24 2.5 inch SATA bays, eight U.2 NVMe slots, and a spot for hot swappable storage. And the best part of that build is that it can be customized to fit all kinds of different use cases. But since you're here, how about we take a look at mine? So the first step of building a storage server with all the customizability I wanted was to find a chassis. The key here is to get as many five and a quarter inch bays as possible since that's the form factor IC Dock uses in most of their units. I eventually settled on this iStar D406, which is a 4U chassis with six five and a quarter inch bays. And make sure you order the D400-6 model specifically because the D400 only has four bays. And this is the one that Newegg initially sent me, even though I ordered the six, so that was fun. Other than that, this is just a chassis, man. The meat and potatoes was the expansion base, so we're good here. Next, I had to decide which expansion base I wanted, which is determined by what I'd be using this for. I think the goal I had in mind was to have a mass flash storage device that could grow with my needs for things like VM storage, caching, block storage, and just any use case where I want something faster than hard drives. I eventually settled on three of these MB038SP-B units, which each house eight two and a half inch SATA drives and are connected via eight SATA ports and are powered with two SATA power connections. So if you can do grade school math, that means we need 24 ports on our motherboard, right? Well, yes and no. We do need to connect 24 SATA drives, but we can do that with a single PCIe card. I bought this LSI SAS 9306 24i card that uses three slim SAS 8654 connectors that can each be broken out into eight SATA connections. How convenient. This ran me about $150 total, and the IC Dock units are $140 each, but let me make it clear that IC Dock sent all of these over for the video, except for one that I'll get to in a bit. Now, with half of our expansion slots already gone, I then wanted to make sure that I had space for NVMe storage, more specifically U.2. IC Dock makes some M.2 units, but for my use case, I wanted U.2 due to the storage density and endurance. I reused my MB699VP-BV3 from the last video since I liked it so much, and since I liked it so much, I got another one. That's eight U.2 drives, which means eight Oculink connections, which means I needed to dedicate two full X16 PCIe slots, each with this SlimSass Oculink card I found on Amazon for $50. The cables were also $30 each, so that's $220 just to be able to connect our units. And the units themselves aren't cheap at $400 a piece. With just a single expansion bay left, I was torn. Initially, I went with one of their MB902SPR-BR1 units, which offers dual two and a half inch drives with built-in hardware RAID. This is useful for installing your operating system on because losing a drive wouldn't mean your entire system comes down. But then I thought, I'm using Proxmox anyway, and they have built-in ZFS support on the boot partition, so I really don't need this. My backup was to then go with this MB095SP-B, which gives me three hot swap bays, two two and a half inch and one three and a half inch. This is cool because it gives me a cool, easy way to offload media from another hard drive. And since my main camera records to a Ninja 5 and those use regular old two and a half inch SSDs, I could just turn around and plug those into my storage server for quick automated footage ingestion. For content creators, that's a pretty useful feature. And it's only 50 bucks. So just like that, all of my expansion slots are taken and nothing makes me happier than having my holes filled, but now we need some actual storage. Getting 24 drives for our first part is no trivial matter. Luckily, the sponsor of this video, Micro Center, hooked it up with 24 of their 512 gigabyte inland professional SSDs. Micro Center is essentially the place to shop for anything tech, whether you're getting a single drive or 24 of them, or more likely looking for some other PC parts. February is actually build your own month, so check out the deals going on right now to find parts you need for your next PC build. You can also bring in your old parts to trade in, donate, or recycle so you can get some cash or some good karma. I probably need to make use of that. 
And FYI, the opening of the Santa Clara store is right around the corner. So if you're in the area, check in on that and snag a free 128 gigabyte USB drive. Links for all those juicy Micro Center deals are down in the description below. So make sure you check those out and visit a Micro Center near you. I will say that I wish the icy dock units were toolless because I had to spend like 15 whole minutes screwing in all the drives into their sleds. As for our eight U.2 drives, well, that's a different beast. I know in the last video I used those crazy expensive 30 terabyte solidon drives and you guys got mad at me. So this time I just use them again. Do y'all really think I'm not gonna make use of those things? Pfft. This time though, I only use two of them. Then two of their faster 16 terabyte units. The other four are some more modest two terabyte drives, which are actually the sweet spot for price when you're shopping around for some U.2 that won't have your wife taking notes on episodes of Divorce Court. Now, again, this is my personal setup and it's very unlikely you're going to be doing this exact build. All right, now that we have our storage, the last piece of the build is our motherboard CPU combo. And since we're making use of roughly 40 physical PCIe lanes, I needed something outside the consumer space. I could have gone with a V4 Xeon or something, but I figure I'll want to expand this even more down the line so you know I had to go with Epic. I initially went with a super micro board with a 7302, but it was DOA, which had me thinking this build was cursed. I then found another seller with the same super micro H11 SSLi SP3 board, except with an Epic 7232 for around $475. This gives me an eight core 16 thread chip with 128 lanes of PCIe Gen 4. Unfortunately though, the motherboard only supports Gen 3, but we do get a nice choice of physical PCIe slots. It's not quite as nice as my ASRock board from the same generation that does support PCIe Gen 4 and has seven whole ass X16 slots, but those are more expensive. For this use case, I think the Super Micro will be fine. Oh, and for funsies, I threw in a 100 gig Mellanox card, cause like, why not? To cool the chip, I snagged an Arctic Freezer 4UM, which legit looks like a jet engine, but it's surprisingly quiet and they made it a point to ensure that it fits nicely in a 4U chassis. Although now I can't really fit the support bar thingy back in, but uh, I don't think that matters. Overall thoughts on the build? I'm happy with it. A couple of things to note though, are that you probably think something like this would be extremely loud, but really isn't like at all. Each of the IC dock units has a small fan or two built in, which provides enough cooling without being noisy. And the Arctic cooler is pretty quiet as well. I am a bit concerned about my PCIe cards though. That's a lot of beef crammed into that area. So I'll probably print out some kind of fan bracket to get some airflow over those parts. Another thing you may have noticed is that I do have two vacant three and a half inch expansion bays at the bottom of the chassis. I could easily slide two hard drives in those or go with some icy dock three and a half inch expansions. But when I was building this out, I didn't really have a good plan. So that'll probably be something I update in the production version of this build. Neat. So that's the build in terms of the setup. The only thing you'll want to make sure you do is set the PCIe slot that is connected to the U.2 drives to four by four by four by four bifurcation so that the system can see each of the drives individually. Other than that, I just turned it on, installed Proxmox, contemplated where I went wrong in life to become a YouTuber and made sure that all of my drives were detected. And fortunately enough, they were all there. Now the goal here is to create a usable storage server, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't have the urge to put all 24 SSDs in a RAID 0 configuration. So I did that. Using FIO to test this, I'd say gave me some expected results. In a sequential test, we saw 5.1 gigabytes per second reads and 4.2 gigabyte per second writes, which is pretty solid considering these are regular old SATA drives. Random test gave me 133,000 IOPS reads and 75,000 IOPS writes, which were okay, I guess. To be honest, I never really seen FIO random tests to scale well with MDADM striping, but I could just be a big dummy. Either way, this is a silly setup and nobody's actually using a 24 drive strike. Moving on to how I'd actually use this, and that is to set up a TrueNAS VM. After spinning up TrueNAS, I then had to pass through all of my drives. The SATA ones were easy since they're all connected to a single HBA card, but the U.2 drives need to be passed through individually. Remember that bifurcation? Yeah. And of course we can't forget our 100 gig card. More on that in a bit. 
Once we're in TrueNAS, it's time to set up our pools. For this setup, I wanted to go with three different ones. The first one is gonna use all of our SATA SSDs, and it's gonna be in a four RAID Z1 setup with six drives in each. That's gonna give us four drives worth of fault tolerance and around 10 terabytes of usable space. Sure, it's not a massive amount of storage, but it's gonna be reliable, fast, and relatively cheap. Realistically, it might have made more sense to go with two RAID Z2 VDEVs that use 12 drives each. Use ZFS experts out there to let me know down in the comments. The next pool is going to be my fast pool and use my two 16 terabyte U.2 drives in a striped configuration. Yes, I know it's funny going from a 24 drive pool that's supposed to be fast and a good amount of storage to a pool that just dwarfs it in every way but you're gonna pay for it. I think each of those drives retails for around $4,000. So yeah, uh, you pay big money, you get big performance. In the real world, you could use M.2 drives in a stripe like this for some really fast storage to host VMs or for highly specific apps that need high bandwidth and capacity. The last pool is gonna be my big NVMe storage, which is using two of those 30 terabyte NVMe drives in a mirror. Funny enough, the fast pool and this one will end up with the exact same capacity, so do whatever you want with that info. And these drives aren't as fast when it comes to random IOPS as the previous ones, but they're still a good step over SATA drives. And again, these are comically expensive, but since I have them on loan from Solidime, I'm gonna use them. And look, most of you aren't gonna do this. This was just for the memes. At least with this pool, one of the drives can fail and instead of my wallet and data crying, just my wallet would. As for the other four U.2 drives, I'm not going to assign them to a pool just yet. The eventual plan for this server is to get a JBOD and connect it to give me the option of using spinning disks. Once that comes to fruition, these two terabyte U.2 drives are going to be great for caching or special device disks to speed up that mass storage. And since the entirety of the storage server already uses SSDs, adding cache really wouldn't be worth it. Maybe in some fringe cases, but eh. And now that I have the pools, I then needed a data set on each of them. I really like how TrueNAS Scale has introduced these data set templates. The one I'm using for each is the multi-protocol one, which configures it for use with NFS and SMB shares. I did have to first create a user with SMB access, so if you don't have that, it will give you a warning. Then we'll go in and edit the ACL on each to ensure that our new user has access to the file system. After that, we have our three pools all accessible across the network via SMB or NFS. But let's talk about that 100 gig NIC, because surely with all that fast storage, we need fast networking. Well, when I passed it through to TrueNAS, it wasn't detected, which had me assuming that the card was in InfiniBand mode instead of Ethernet mode. I then tried using the Mellanox MLX config utility to fix this on the Proxmox host, but turns out the latest version of Debian that the utility supports is 2.5 and Proxmox 8.3 is based on 12.9, so that didn't work. I even tried skipping the distro check and no dice. Oh well, I'll just spin up an Ubuntu VM and use the utility there. This worked in that I could run the utility, but when I changed the mode to Ethernet, it wouldn't stick. Even after restarting the VM multiple times, it was stuck in InfiniBand mode. So I just said screw it and shut the machine down and move the card into a Windows system. And as I was powering on the new system, it hit me. When changing the mode of the card, you have to restart the system, meaning the entire host, not the VM. This whole time, I just had to restart the host server and it would have worked. Definitely not my finest moment. Of course, after putting it back in the storage server and passing it back through to TrueNAS, it was working as expected and I had 100 gig networking. For the most part, you aren't gonna see 100 gig speeds on a setup like this as you'll probably need some fancier protocols like RDMA or NVMe over fabrics neither of which I think are natively supported in TrueNAS. I did a video before about 100 gig networking using ROCE or RDMA over Converge Ethernet on a Windows host, so go check that out if you wanna see big numbers. I'd really like to see some native support for this in TrueNAS, but I'm not sure if there's a real market for it. Anyway, that's my new storage server. Under normal load, it only pulls around 140 to 150 watts, which is pretty good for how much power and storage is in here. As is, it's gonna serve as my main storage for virtual machines and basically all my storage needs outside of big stuff like Plex Media, YouTube archives, and backups. And like I said, I do want to eventually add a JBOD so that I can add my mass storage here as well. And I even bought an HBA card for it by accident. 
Oops. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my super fast storage server with 400 gig networking. Y'all are just so fast. And if you're still watching, you're a spinning disc. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.